Alright mate, how's it going? Welcome back to Football Therapy with me, your host Jan. I do hope you lot are all doing well today. Yes indeed, welcome back to Football Therapy, the platform where I mainly give you Chelsea Football Club news. And today, that's what we're doing man, it's a Chelsea news video where I'm going to be talking about three stories. The first being the return of Chelsea's players, or all of Chelsea's players, to England. Essentially all players who are self-isolating abroad have come back to England at the request of Chelsea Football Club because it looks like they're going to start training again. That's good news, provided it's safe. Secondly, could Chelsea sign Kalido Koulibaly being heavily linked to make the super partnership with Virgil van Dijk to Liverpool, but recently it was rumoured that he could come to Chelsea. Could Chelsea sign him? And is it a good idea? More on that in a moment. And finally, Jeremy Boga. Yes, I've spoken about him before. The young ex-Chelsea winger has basically attracted interest from relatively big clubs all around Europe. And of course, Chelsea have a buyback clause for the young Sassuolo winger. 12 or 13 million pounds, I believe it is. Obviously a superb deal. Loads of clubs want him, would probably play more than that for him. Would he come to Chelsea though? Frank Lampard would have to convince him. So, some cracking stuff to get into today, but a quick reminder of course, before we get into it, to subscribe to Football Therapy if you've not yet done so, because I tell you what man, we are on <laughs> the road to 100k. I'm just past 50k and I'm, I, yeah, a bit satire, but the point being, the project, the movement is going well, so thank you to everyone who subbed, and if you do like the content, please do sub, and why not like? the video too. All right, let's get into it. Let's start with Chelsea recalling all players to the country. <laughs> Reliable journalist Matt Law has said that he has been told that all Chelsea players have returned to England now. They were requested to come home essentially to the UK and now everyone's back and one would assume that's because they're going to start training again soon. Now, of course, this should only be done if it's done in a, a really safe way. But a couple of Premier League clubs are already training and if Chelsea, who have basically carried themselves very well throughout this whole health pandemic, this crisis essentially, I imagine they'd do the same on the training pitch. And to be honest man, that's really good news. Obviously it's good news the fact our players are training again, the likes of Ruben Loftus-Cheek being fit, Pulisic being fit, these players kicking a ball together, that's really really important. But also it's important for the mental health of the players to sort of go back to work, to know they're playing for Chelsea, um, you know, a reminder that the league isn't finished and it might finish and they need to be ready. The likes of Pulisic, I don't know, hudson Adoy, Kante, Ruben Loftus-Cheek, all these players to come back into fitness, even Tammy Abraham, get an idea of what's going on, speak to the gaffer, Frank Lampard, know what the plan is, know what, you know, if they are close to bringing a player in or if a player's going out, Giroud knows exactly what's going on, Michy Batshuayi has more talks, knows what's going on with his future. Even though football might not start again just yet, Chelsea being back together and talking about their plans is a massive, massive bonus. Right, now Kalido Koulibaly, let's talk about the Napoli centre-half for a moment. Of course, oh, let me preface this, I recognise Koulibaly as top three, two defenders in the world, centre-halves at the moment. If you look at Virgil van Dijk, who quite, you know, you, you, you could forgive anyone for saying he's the best centre-half in the world right now, Koulibaly would be around him, you know, similar level, do you know what I mean? Now, <sighs> Obviously a lot of people say Chelsea need that one supercharged commanding centre half that will make the whole back line better and I get it. But the way my stance is on purchases, is it a good deal in the long run? Now you might say, ah but Jan, you want old man 33 year old Dries Mertens at Chelsea. Yes, because he would be on a free and on a short term contract. Someone like Kalido Koulibaly would not be on a free, it'd cost a lot of money and the player's literally about to turn 29, so what, he might get one of the long contracts. Now, I'm not saying I necessarily don't want the player because he's so, so good, dropping into this Chelsea defence, you could only be happy. I'm just wary of certain links of him coming to Chelsea because, you know, there's the likes of Upper Meccano and other sort of more smart long-term purchases, potentially on the cards, I don't want to say on the cards, but, you know, players that perhaps Chelsea should be preferencing. But it's, I get it, a load of you in the comments are going to be saying, what Jan, best defender, joint defender, second best defender in the world coming into Chelsea. Fine, if Chelsea have got the money to spend on Kalido Koulibaly, then do it man, I'd be stoked to see our defence get loads better. 
Even though, of course, cooler barley would come with a small risk. I've spoken about this before on different platforms, but just because he's amazing, and he is amazing in Italy, his tackling is second to none, his like, recoveries and tackling is just like a marvel to watch, man. But would he just come into the Premier League straight away and be amazing? Think about it, Virgil van Dijk played in British football for a long time, Celtic, Southampton, speaks fluent English, Liverpool spent loads of money on him, but if you look at it, the investment is not as risky as Kalido Koulibaly. I'm not sure how good his English is, but I'm pretty sure I can guess he doesn't speak English. And also, it will be a completely different type of football in a new environment, new country. The risk factor would be a lot, lot higher than Virgil van Dijk at Liverpool. And also, at the moment, just to throw this in, Jurgen Klopp, apparently, well, Liverpool are now favourites to sign Kalido Koulibaly. Imagine Virgil van Dijk and Koulibaly as a centre-half partnership. I mean, it's kind of the stuff of FIFA dreams for Liverpool fans, isn't it? Still, like I said, there have been a few stories from Italian journalists, uh, Italian news outlets saying Chelsea do have a chance to sign Kalido Koulibaly. But for me, I think it'll be a lot of money. I'm not sure the club will have that much money to throw around on a centre-back. Um, maybe like, you know, priority position, left back, striker. Sure, I get how a centre half could make Chelsea better as a whole, but they're gonna come in and throw 70 million on Koulibaly, and that's probably a discount price in this climate. I'm not so sure. Don't get me wrong, Chelsea fans. If Kalido Koulibaly rocks up at Stamford Bridge, this man will be happy. <coughs> um, so we'll watch this space, but it's another one of these plays that have been linked to Chelsea and has gone around the media. And in a Chelsea news series, I want to talk about it to you guys and just give you my opinion like I so often do. So, Kalido Koulibaly to Chelsea, maybe, probably not, but story, check. Let's move on. Right, Jeremy Boga. We all know the score with the young Frenchman playing away in Italy for Sassuolo was one of the brightest stars in the Chelsea Academy. Obviously played in the pre-season under Antonio Conte didn't really see him again after that went off alone and sold to Sassuolo for very very little indeed but Chelsea did put in a buyback clause for about 12.5 million pounds Boga has four goals in his last six games for Sassuolo he scored some absolute long-range bangers as well and looks like a very exciting young player again a few clubs won him, including the likes of Everton and Roma. Now, of course, these other potential suitors that are now circling around Jeremy Boga would probably have to pay more than what Chelsea would have to pay with their buyback clause. And of course, they could trigger that first and maybe swoop in and get him, provided Chelsea could convince the player to come to Chelsea. Or Frank Lampard convinces the player to come to Chelsea. And I mean, Chelsea as a team, or a big team, of course, exciting prospect. He will know the players there because, uh, you know, we'd have come through the ranks with them. But really after playing at such a high level in a top five league you know starter scoring goals scoring wonder goals relatively big clubs circling around you you'll want to know that you're going to get game time now he can go to like a roma and start you know big club in italy man start and if frank lampard wants him as like a sort of rotational winger he'll have to know man, am I actually going to get decent minutes here? You know, I don't want to be coming off the bench in the 80th minute and maybe starting some cup games. And that's a difficult one, because if you think Ziyech might play on the right wing at Chelsea, Pulisic on the left wing, they've still got hudson Adoy to rotate on either of those flanks, and even Mason Mount can play left wing relatively well. So is Boga going to be guaranteed to start over Christian Pulisic? I'm not so sure. Personally, though, I think he'd be excellent business in a time where a lot of clubs can't do any business, like at all. Some, you know, apparently Tottenham have <laughs> told Jose Mourinho, you can only have free transfers. Mental, think about it, mental. So if all transfers are off the table, you know, Chelsea might take advantage in this particular situation, loan a lot of their youngsters, because loans are suddenly gonna be like hot property, do you know what I mean? And Chelsea have got a good group of youngsters ready for loans. Yeah, so there's that. But if Chelsea are to lose both Willian and Pedro, sure, Hakim Ziyech can replace one, but they might need another winger to replace the other. Jeremy Boga could be that man at a very, very decent price, of course, at 12.5 million pounds. Really, it just comes down to convincing the player if he wants to come. And the thing is, he has got loads and loads of quality. Put him in this Chelsea side with more quality around him. 
who's to say his level can't get even higher? Why not go for an option like Bogus, who, fair enough, at the start might be a third choice, fourth choice winger, but if he plays well, he's got great talent, he'll get into the first team. Slash starting 11, you know what I mean. Of course, Frank Lampard's Chelsea is a meritocracy and everybody gets the chance. So Boga, maybe. Anyway, what do you guys think? I want your thoughts and opinions on the stories I've spoken about. Of course, Chelsea training again could only be a positive thing. But when it comes to Kalido, Koulibaly and Jeremy Boga, I want your opinions. So jump down into the comment section below and let me know those. Also, if you've enjoyed the content, of course, like the video, subscribe if you are new. Follow me on social media at Football Yannick. That's it from me, you lot. Enjoy the football that sadly isn't happening at the moment, and I will see you later. You ain't so tough with that bad boy tuck. I'ma get it how I'm living, I'ma walk the walk. Outline my lines, I rap through thought. Body bag the verse, outline the chuck. In my life, seen trouble, hustle on the double. Silence on the trigger, like my pick got a muzzle. Yo, chick like to guzzle, bad boy stay in trouble. I only love this paper, sorry, I don't. I love me, baby.